So a few weeks ago, I had the privilege of studying with master guitarist Julian Lodge, and I've been sharing some of what I learned over the past few weeks. So if you missed any of those, you can go to my channel to watch them, or you can start at the beginning with this one right here. Okay, today I want to explore something Julian said during a master class on improvisation. So we were about 50 minutes into the class when he casually said a couple things that were so simple yet profound, you really should hear them for yourself. Yeah, I'm sure we all have, right? Where you think, ah, oh, this is what this really needs is a fast lot, and then you hear back and you go, I don't think it needed that. I think I, I wanted to do it. Uh, so you get into the territory of you know playing what the music needs versus playing what you are able to play. Empathetic capacity for um, going for something and missing it. Like I miss you uh, when I played for you before. I missed a lot of stuff, and it was kind of hilarious. I, like I was like, oh, that's cool. You go for it. I mean, it's not. It's, it's okay. It's okay. It's part of us. Also part of the. Um, there's a charisma to it. And the partnership is that I, I don't, if I am going up, 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 and then I don't stick the landing, you already heard the high note. You know, the brain kind of puts it in for me. So today we're going to unpack those comments, and I promise that what we learn is going to help you play better, bolder guitar solos starting right now. So the first thing Julian said is to play what the music needs versus what you're able to play. So many guitarists, especially ones that are less experienced or, or more ego-driven, they approach a guitar solo as one thing. It's just a chance to impress people with their level of skill. They have this urge to demonstrate what they're able to play, and it doesn't matter what the musical context is, right? And sometimes it works. I mean, there are times when a ripping solo can come out of nowhere and actually enhance the meaning or the message of a song. And the agreement isn't watch me be awesome. That's not, there's, there's other things far more awesome um, in the world, but, but the, the, the agreement is, uh, let me show you something that's meaningful to me, take your lead. At the heart of what Julian is saying is the idea that most music doesn't need you to shred or impress the listener with guitar pyrotechnics. I mean, more often than not, that kind of guitar playing just interrupts the flow. It can kill the vibe of whatever you and your band are playing. I think that's why many of the most memorable guitar solos are not inherently impressive. They're memorable because the guitarist played what the music needed. You know, so almost any solo by George Harrison or Stephen Stills or Lindsey Buckingham fits that description. I mean, one of my favorite examples is the solo on Paul McCartney's song, My Love. It was played by Henry McCullough. And you know, I'll be honest, I find the song kind of sugary, but I will listen to that whole thing just to hear that beautiful solo. It's so melodic, full of what I call the ache, right? It's a template for the kind of solos I love because a solo shouldn't be about glorifying you, the guitarist. It should be about enhancing the song. Now, if you really want to cement this idea, check out my video about two essential questions to ask yourself before playing any solo. Not very many people have seen that video, but I think it's one of my best, one of my most important. Okay, so play what the music needs versus what you're able to play. All right, then next, Julian said something that sounds like an opposing idea. He said, if you go for stuff and miss it, that's okay. Even if you don't stick the landing, the listener's brain will have already put in the high note, right? Now, you might think he's actually endorsing or advocating playing at your maximum level of ability or even beyond it, but I've watched Julian a lot, and after seeing him live now and seeing how he subjugates his ego to serve each piece of music, I am totally confident that what he really means is that as long as you're playing what the music needs, 
you can miss a note or even miss notes and your intention will still be clear to the audience and they'll forgive it if you miss something. When we're talking about intent, I think, I think all you're left with is intent. I intentionally want to play this because it seems like what I want to be doing right now. Um, I don't have a metric. I, it's not like, oh, because you smiled, I should do more of that. Like, I can't, we're not, that's not our dynamic right I've got a recent example in my own world. I was recording an acoustic guitar solo for my duo Cosmic Spin single, A Break in the Clouds. And take one of the solo was full of emotion, but I didn't play it perfectly. There were these tiny little glitches and some finger noise. So I went back and I tried over and over to capture the same feeling and you know the same level of intensity as that first take. But of course, I wanted to play every note cleanly, right? My ego was involved. And guess what? It did not work. I ended up using take one despite the imperfections. And now I got to say, I love those little glitches way more than I would have liked a perfectly played solo because the imperfections are human and that makes the emotion more authentic. So at first I'd been kind of embarrassed about not sticking the landing, but then I realized the attempt was what mattered. And you know, the more I think about it, there are tons of pop and rock hits that are just full of imperfect solos that are ultimately perfect for the songs they're in. All right, what do you think about playing what the music needs and being okay when you don't nail every note of a solo? Tell me if you agree with Julian's take in the comments. All right, there you go. Two more gems from Julian Lodge. Make sure you're subscribed right over here so you get all the best tips, tricks, and inspiration to make your music great. I wanna thank you for watching. I hope to see you next time or right now.